documents used to all come in one nice little packet with one signature needed um, and now you have to initial, initial, initial signature, signature, signature so. well, we've become much more efficient <laughs> oh yeah. yeah well we're here today um, we have um, pre-applied and then applied um, for a grant and this is the actual grant execution of the paperwork mm -hmm. this is um, the grant to install an obstruction light just off the runway at um, Woodward Industries there in Middlefield, um, and also to begin our aeronautical survey. Um, the reason for the aeronautical survey came about, uh, FAA had gone through and done, based on the paperwork they had, um, issued uh, mandates on all their airports as to what needed to be done for obstructions to re be removed. And what they found was, and this was one of the things John alluded to the other day, that uh, there were four trees listed on our air, uh, near our airport that needed to be removed uh, to clear some obstructions. When we went to the coordinates that they had for these four trees, they would be like a mile and a half off the airport. So to be an obstruction to our runway, they'd have to be three to 600 feet tall. So the data that they had was obviously incorrect. My yeah. So now in order for us, they did remove our night um, approach, our GPS approach, um, our night approach, so that now in order for us to gain it back, we have to have this new survey done to make sure where all the trees are that need removed and things like that. And FAA does pay for it as part of their program, but there is a 10% match. So our total on this um, that we're asking for on this uh, grant is $9,050, and that is a 10% match of uh, the total grant. The, the obstruction that's light, that's just for survey. clarification, that's just a flashing red light or something? Correct, Correct. Uh, on the top I mean, of it's the like tower. A, I would call it a warning light. But yeah, just so that all pilots are aware that that tower is there in case there's too much fog. Right. Um, okay. You know, a lot of people fly more by GPS now and don't pay as much attention to what's around them. And so it's important that these things get lit. And this has been there for a long time. But as part of this uh, updating and removing obstructions, uh, it was time to get it done. You better be careful the uh, Jug Park uh, <laughs> anti cutting tree down group does not hear about this. I'll be picketing in front of uh, the airport. Yeah, they can picket in front of the airport. But the <laughs> safety of the airport pilots and the people around the airport is going to trump that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so with that, I think we could read number one. Thanks. The John County Airport Authority is requesting the board approve and authorize the president of the board to execute the U.S. Department of Transportation Federal Aviation Administration FAA Grant Agreement Documents AIP 3390054 to install obstruction light on existing mm -hmm. staff and conduct aeronautical mm -hmm. survey in the amount of $90,500, $81,450 FAA portion, and $9,050 local match. Make that motion. Second. Commissioner Sweeney? Aye. Commissioner Rear? Aye. Commissioner Spiller? Aye. Motion stands approved. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks so much, Patty. Have a good day. Okay. We've got some engineers. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. <laughs> Don't sit down. <laughs> Just keep walking on. Morning. All right. Morning. 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 Well. Good. Good. Right. Good. 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 Yeah, no problem. Not too bad. I know. I got two leaves now. Is there an official amount of rain? I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, two inches. Well, I had 2.3 at my house, but that's not official. Thank you, Gavin. All right, moving on. Um, just asking the uh, commissioners to approve the uh, snow and ice control contract with Chester Township for uh, the snow season. Uh, there's an increase from from last year of about twelve thousand um, dollars 
to 54,697. Uh, that increase is strictly just the increase in cost of salt. Salt last year we were paying about $24 a ton, this year it's 55 oh. And everybody's calling me wondering how I got such a good price because Lake County is at 102. Oh. Portage is at 108, I believe. Uh, they have no idea what they're going to do. Yeah. I mean, it's already, for me, it's a, you know, two, three hundred thousand dollars. Oh, that's more than it was last year, but, but it's not compared to them, I mean, they're looking at a million over right, yeah, that they don't have. But you always just, get it early, though, right? You always we bid it early. You were bid it yeah, early, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. In this case, so, we went with the state bid yeah. real yeah. early. Wow. So yeah, we're. I mean, we're concerned about what we have to deal with, but uh, it's nothing compared to what everybody else is working on. Are they something. predicting a shortage? Uh, no. Uh, I don't exactly I mean, last year didn't they have a shortage or something? Well, that could be argued. Oh, okay, but I mean, that was what the excuse was. Right. Somebody got a hold of the farmer's own. Well, they have more money. Probably. Those other they, they, they have more money. Not, not after this year, they won't. <laughs> well, that'll take care of it. Yeah, so, so at any rate, this, we, we thought this was a very fair uh, contract with Chester Township. And, uh, it saves us money, and it makes them a little bit of money. Uh, their trucks are already covering these roads because they're getting to the subdivision roads, so it's just government being efficient. So it's worth it. Um, just as an aside to this one, um, Bainbridge, we've worked out a three-year deal with them, so we don't have a contract. We did that last year. Um, so, you know, they continue to do a couple of for us down there, and uh, that's under last year's contract. Interestingly, if they signed it, if we and they signed a three-year contract last year, how do they account for the increase in salt? They just eat it? Uh, Yes and no. They, um, there was some factored into that. What it was is they were borrowing our conveyor and uh, soft conveyor. Right. And as a result of that, um, they used it and said they'd like to purchase it off of us. Uh, we used it very sparingly, so we thought it made sense. <coughs> so it was kind of a deal where we had already you know, give them a resource at no cost to so kind of balanced out over the long haul. So, and the salt price fluctuates. We had actually negotiated off the previous year's price, which I think was about $48. So it wasn't last, last year, it wasn't last year's sale price. Right. It was uh, right. a more realistic right. Well, and, and average. The, right. And over the history, we haven't seen these spikes like that we're seeing right now. The last few years have just been crazy. Hmm. Uh, so. What is salt and salt? You just gotta dig it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. <laughs> <laughs> Get in there, Jay. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. Can really. you dig it? Can yeah, you dig it? <laughs> you can speculate all day long, but that's yeah. just speculation. Oh, yeah. um, but at any rate, we think this is a very fair deal. Uh, you know, the the township. Yeah, you have a agree with months of two. We have two roads there that months of does. Uh, no, just I thought we did. In Chester. Maybe at one point there yeah, was. Yeah, I remember uh, a couple of roads that. What was Munson doing? I don't some of the roads where the engineer would would have to do it, they you know they would just pick it. I don't remember which ones, but I do remember that with IRO we did a few there. Yeah. Maybe it's now it's just Chester. Yeah. Just Chester. Well, he's got yes. one more to go. One more to go. Oh. We've still got more sign in. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I it it was it was be, yeah. Maybe maybe it's a road that the county took over yeah. eventually. Or the one that went yeah, into like Newberry. That. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. probably yeah. what happened. We switched. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we will read number two. The county engineer's office is requesting the board approve and execute the snow and ice control agreement between the Judd County Board of Commissioners, the Judd County Engineer, and the Chester Township Board of Trustees for the winter season of 2014 through 2015. Second. Mr. Sweeney? Aye. Mr. Mayor? Aye. Mr. Spillway? Aye. Motion approved. Did you guys want us to uh, make comment on item six? We have some involved in that. Uh, do you have an updated agenda? Um, I don't know which one you're talking about. Precision. Precision. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, you need to go all the way down to number 12. Yeah, there's a new one right there. Mine only goes up to seven, so we're leaving. Right where it's updated. Oh, would you that's like to the Russell Township one. Do you, you want any comment from us on that? Right now, if you want to, we can do that. It would be very helpful. Cover it. Yeah, you may as well. Yeah, we would like to. This particular road, um, we've got 
printed out the aerials for you. Um, you see the, the road already exists back in here. Here, the green is technically the end of the road, but uh, the road exists and there's a turnaround and the township's been following it, maintaining it, and turning their plow trucks around there. And uh, when they went to, they wanted to pave it, we pulled up the records and realized they don't even own that last uh, several hundred feet. So they can't do an improvement on it. So they're petitioning the uh, commissioners to uh, do a uh, dedication process and come through us. And it makes complete sense. I, it, it's just housekeeping as far as I'm concerned. The property owners are in complete agreement with it. In fact, they have offered to just give the property to the township at no cost. So uh, it's doesn't change the way the is world that a, is that a That's correct. not a dedicated road right now. It, that's when it's dedicated, it stops. You see where the green stops? That's where it stops. That's now. where it's dedicated. And then that other part is not. Right. Is there's a, a, the road continues on, and there's a there's a small cul-de-sac at the end. If you went down there, you would think yeah, it's, it's all a part. cul-de-sac. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. It all looks the same. Yeah. So they're just trying to uh, fix yeah, that. Makes road. sense to. Just all part of the Mostly housekeeping, but they can't spend money on it if it's not there. So they're uh, trying to clean that up. And this was just the uh, township trustees asking you guys to order us to do some work on there to uh, prepare the, uh, the plan and so forth to do that. And are we going to have to do a viewing and all that? I, I believe there is in the whole public area. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You talked to, well, you would have talked to Laura on this? Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's actually where this language came from okay. yesterday. So, yeah. all right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, this originally the uh, township had called me, and I, was, I told them they had to ask the commissioners, and I had to call the commissioners to meet them. So, okay. So, yeah. Oh, that's good. I appreciate the update yeah. on that. Yeah, I, this just, this right now is just you, you guys asking me to do the work and then go forward and then we'll proceed this for public Okay. And if we want to, with that information, if we want to go ahead and read number 12 and then just pick it off the agenda. The commissioner's office is requesting the board acknowledge receipt of a letter from Russell Township Trustees dated August 21st, 2014, stating that the Russell Township Trustees voted to petition the county commissioners for assistance with the dedication of that for road purposes for Stillwater Drive in Russell Township, pursuant to ORC 5553.31, and further request the county engineer to prepare a description of the lands to be dedicated with a plan of such lands thereto for approval and acceptance by the board of county commissioners. I'll make that motion. Second. Mr. Tweed? Aye. Mr. Lynch? Aye. Mr. Spillard? Aye. Motion approved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just as an um, added note, we will be starting Fowler's Mill Road Bridge on Monday. Everybody's been notified, all owners, fire police, everyone, I mean, trustees, everything, but just for your reference. This is the where the Fowler's Mill Road Bridge. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Just more to make it. Mm -hmm. Down by the road. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Thank you. Okay, so right. 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 Morning. 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 Are we all good? Morning. 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 Yeah. All right, Glenn. So your old smiles this morning. So I'm almost done. He's all back up with you today. <laughs> 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 it's always good to do that. Mm -hmm. The first one's uh, a sidewalk that goes around the toll of the outside of the um, safety center. Uh, the deputies down there, I guess, need to do a walk around the building for security reasons and everything. And this is a more of a safety thing. So we don't have them tripping or raccoons chasing them back there. So I don't think it's going to stop the raccoons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Part of the ICE requirement is that they have to patrol the outside of the building at least once a day. So right now they're having to walk across the grass and in the winter time it's a little cumbersome. And, uh, so this will make it a lot easier and safer too. For, for the record, could you explain what the ICE yeah. uh, the immigration um, inmates that we house as with, uh, they have a whole different set of standards than the normal Ohio jail standards. <clears throat> and that's one of the requirements that is unique to their uh, incarceration that we have to follow. Yeah, the other thing is that, that we got a uh, storage 
been from the Bureau of Criminal Investigations, BCI, or uh, meth lab stuff. So when we do a, a meth lab, we'd have to go in and clean it up. Previously, they'd have to take all those chemicals and everything down to Ashland, where they would store them. They wanted one up in Northeast Ohio, so we agreed to house it. It's a 20 by it's like an explosion proof thing. Um, but it's sitting in the parking lot right now, it's pretty heavy and it's sitting on the asphalt, so we need to have a concrete pad for that to sit on. And then Ashtabula, Jaga, Trumbull, anybody, they'll bring that stuff there, and then BCI comes every so often, depending on how much uh, activity here there is, they come in and clean it out resupply it with the stuff that we need and then we don't have to drive to Ashland and nobody has to drive the you know a further distance in order to get rid of these chemicals. So yeah there's various hazardous chemicals right, right for that process. It's not that it's you know in danger of exploding or anything, but it's still it's chemicals that need to be disposed of properly and rather than come out to each incident, we can now just put them into this storage bin and then the BCI comes every so often and that source the pan will be. It's going to be on. The, it's already there. It's on the back side of the building uh, where the employees park. Okay. We just took one spot all oh, the way okay. at the end. On on the north end. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So if we could be number three. The maintenance department is requesting the board approve an next two-day service contract agreement with Peterson Construction and Contracting to install sidewalks and pads at the Jog County Safety Center in an amount not to exceed twelve thousand four hundred forty-eight dollars. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. Mr. Speedy? Aye. Commissioner Reyes? Aye. Commissioner Sibley? Aye. Motion stands approved. And let's see, number four. Yeah. This one I'm really, really excited about. We're finally getting to the end of this tunnel. Uh, this is to replace all our video systems within that safety center. Right. This, this to me is a main, probably the chief to a major, major plus. Uh, this helps protect the deputies along with anybody else. Uh, everything's recorded. Uh, this is also going to go from the analog uh, cameras where we can also start recording the IP cameras all into one system. Uh, the way this is also going to work is they can download everything to one CD now. When that CD is sent out to the prosecutors or whoever, right, they can open it up automatically right on there. So they don't need a program on their computer now, too. And this so, is replacing the system that went nine years ago when the safety center was right. built. And, that's and, what was and if you remember, the, the original plan when, when the safety center was built, they were going to put VCRs in. Yeah. And, and you know, we had them switch it to, to DVRs, at least. And so we've gotten at least nine years of data put VCRs, and we'd have been doing this year two, two years yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah. But so it, the technology in nine years, as you know, has changed Jesus. so much. And, yes. and it's so crucial that when we have an event, especially inside the jail, that we have a, a record of that. Not only if, it, if there's an altercation with the inmates or if somebody brings somebody in for a breath test and that, we're constantly getting uh, requests from defense attorneys for that information. And it needs to be good quality stuff and this is the first step. The next step is going to be to replace the camera so that we can have some, some good quality stuff. And that, like I said, the technology has changed where you can put one, I call it a fisheye camera now. And, and that camera, you can actually zoom in on stuff from one camera in there and, and have the evidence. Um, right now, when, a, when a, there's a fight or something, it's very difficult to tell who started it, you know, what happened. All you know is that there was an altercation. But this is the first step towards that. In, in grant money is paying for some of this through the OCJS um, we apply for a grant to help pay for this. Now one of the good things about the, the fish shot camera is even after you record, right, where it's on a CD, you can still put that in and not just get that picture. You can still pan tilt that to wherever you want it. It's Oh, technology that's, right. that's really mm -hmm. so records the whole area. You can zoom into an area where you want to zoom even after, 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 yeah, even so it's after. capturing that whole right. panorama. Right. You can zoom in. That's very yeah. cool, and that's a major, major plus because it was a fight or something. Yeah. You know, you then you can see what's area. going on in that corner. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, that's really. How many cameras is, or devices uh, will this buy? This forty-five, uh, one hundred and thirty-two. Mm -hmm. 
Now you're not swapping all the cameras. No, this is the this is the device that uh, recording. Record. Yeah. Yeah. Record. Record. Yeah. Okay. It's all the recording. And how, how much how much recording time is this? Uh, uh, six terabytes. 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 So of the 132 cameras, it puts it all in segments. Then obviously, as it's recording, because they're in different locales, so it has to segment There's it out. So four, that you can four machines. And each one of those capable of up to 32 megabytes. So it's not all in yeah. one one machine. Mm -hmm. It is a broke down of four machines. Four machines. And then you go from that. Good. More stuff to sign the blue copies. Just read number four. And then here. The maintenance department is requesting the board approve an XMA service contract agreement with Tyco Integrated Security LLC for the purchase and installation of a video recording system at the Jog County Safety Center in an amount not to exceed $45,732. And further approve and authorize the president of the board to initial and execute the Tyco Integrated Security Commercial Sales Agreement, additional terms and conditions, and amendment to Tyco Commercial Sales Agreement E Form 2881 EO7-10-2009, rider for additional equipment and or services and additional terms and conditions. All right, I'll make that motion. Second. Mr. Sneedy? Aye. Commissioner Rear? Aye. Commissioner Stillair? Aye. Motion approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good so, morning, Johnny. Hi, Johnny. Good morning. Hi. How are you? How are you? Okay. Well, um, as you recall, the commissioners uh, had applied for allocation funds and set aside funds uh, in June. Part of the allocation funds were for some improvements at the Thompson Community Center, and the set aside grant was for the remainder of the improvements. And although the state has approved the allocation portion of it, they have asked us to uh, use our real one funds for the remainder of the project because the balance is there. So, uh, in 2010, the commissioners had approved um, allocation of funds to a uh, demo line and an infrastructure line and of course since then both of those programs have gone by the wayside. So we're asking to actually uh, reallocate the funds that you had for the infrastructure line for new septic systems and um, the demo that is no longer going to be done in the county. In what demo? Terms. Uh, we were demolishing yeah, uh, buildings that yeah. were... Oh, that. Okay. Right. 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 Yeah. right. But that went to bank. Well, that's a separate pot of money. That's the attorney. That's general. the bank money. That's yeah. not the taxpayer money. That so, what money. other monies are you taking away? The infrastructure line, which and, and what is that? Just had approved that for an installation of new septic systems. Just septic systems, right? And wells. And wells. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does this affect uh, the Burton Burton project? No. no. Not no, taking it's money from that. It's a separate thing. I, I really uh, hold the line on that one. Yeah, no, this is totally separate. This has nothing to do with her. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to know what it was for. Okay. <laughs> you made it clear. And I, I, I think did. that it's a good idea because, it, you know, we, we seem to kind of leave that into the county sometimes a little bit uh, dry on, yeah. On, yeah. on funds. And I understand it's a little less, uh, un, you know, underdeveloped or populated, but it's still. it's still part of our county. And I think that we need to try to an entryway to the county. To right. get, Move off, some. get off 90 and come in from the 528. It's uh, and it seems like that you know that that community comes together better than most as far as working together. And, they really do. And everybody really else seems to like just wait for a handout. So. Yeah, they really step up. Yeah. And that oh, okay. area is a 77 percent element. So yeah, that and that in the I south. Think they can I can use the leg up here. So we didn't get the money that. So you're telling me that we didn't get the money that we anticipated for that. That was supposed to come in for that. What is right. this? Why is? Well, that there was that something that was an extra allocation. That was the set aside, and, and it, um, why did they do that? Because, because they saw the funds. balance in our revolving loan fund, and they said, well, "What's that got?" Because they use that. That's because they. They can always have the option of taking those funds back, and we don't want to be a victim of Lord, our own give success. Us I mean, that the money is there because of yeah. a lot of hard work and yeah. 
follow through. Well, we thought it was promised. I mean, we thought that was mm-hmm. promised. Yeah. Okay. All right, so if we could go ahead and do a uh, read on number five. The Office of Community and Economic Development is requesting the board approve the reallocation reallocation of program income funds from the existing septic infrastructure and demolition project activity lines to the Thompson Square project line in the amount of $230,000. Okay, I'll make that motion. Second. Mr. Smee? Aye. Mr. Reardon? Aye. Mr. Spidelag? Aye. Motion stands approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Joey. I mean, so quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. How I missed something. Sounds like I missed a fun moment on Tuesday. <laughs> it's fun. Oh, well. Nothing's well, fun. Mary set off a brick of uh, lady fingers. Well, <laughs> she was right. Well, you were right. The 4% Yeah, year. because yeah. that was uh, an architectural. Sure. We talked about that at length. Yes. Well, you. I mean, not that there's any defense for it, but the whole sh- trying to get everything over to session in and time and miss me well, all the time. running out the door. And we had done right. it up before uh-huh. we even had the meeting, you, and yeah. I missed it. That that was totally mine. But you're absolutely right. It was four percent. Yeah. Three and a quarter. Uh, four three percent years. for three years, yeah. and it was right on the legals, but it was wrong on the commitment letter. And yeah. so that's been corrected, and we apologize for the confusion. But uh, good catch. Yeah. Well, right, so just then, was at the meeting. The I know you were there, and, and, and you and I were talking about it. We're besides, talking about it constantly. So, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, all right. Okay, okay, so number six then. The Office of Community and Economic Development is requesting the board approve and execute the letter of commitment to CNC Precision Machine Incorporated CNC Holdings LLC for the revolving loan fund loan for architectural services for the improvements required to property located at 18360 Industrial Circle, Parkman Township, in the amount of $75,000 for three years, 36 months at 4% interest. I'll make that motion. Second. Commissioner Smee? Aye. Commissioner Rear? Aye. Commissioner Spidelary? Aye. Motion approved. And then we've got. This will be for this is your own review report. Okay. Oh yeah. Um it's standard it's housekeeping. I've it's already run it by the state, they've already said it sounds fine. I just have some attachments I have to put on it. We we'll get the last two today and we'll ship it out and they give us the official stamp of the approval. Um so it's a report. It's a standard report. Okay. So if we could do a read on number seven. The Office of Community and Economic Development is requesting the board approve and authorize the president of the board to execute the House Department of Development Office of Housing and Community Partnerships RLF Grant Loan Review Report Form for a Community Development Block Grant Revolving Loan Fund Loan to CNC Precision Machine Incorporated for the purchase of land and building to be located at 18360 Industrial Circle, Parkman Township, in the amount of $410,000. Okay, I'll make that motion. Second. Commissioner Stevens? Aye. Commissioner Rear? Aye. Commissioner Spidelar? All right, motion stands approved. And uh, last but not least here, we've got the number eight. This is um, for the same company, but it's to uh, provide funds for the purchase of the late existing land and building. Um, this, is, this is a husband and wife machine shop. They started up in Garrettsville. And uh, they've, I pretty much I look at any company that um, is a manufacturer that weathered 2008, 2009, 2010 and had profit as like a really strong little company. They run on a nice margin and they're hard workers. I mean, they're just, uh, he actually wanted to come in and um, sit and meet the commissioners, but he does want you to stop out and visit the place. So as soon as we can get a date, he wants you to come out. He's very appreciative. Good, good. They've always been profitable. Okay. Yes. All right, so if we could do a read on number eight, then. The Office of Community and Economic Development is requesting the board approve and execute the letter of commitment to CNC Precision Machine Incorporated, CNC Holdings LLC, for the revolving loan fund loan to purchase land and building located at 18360 Industrial Circle, Parkman Township, in the amount of $410,000 for 15 years, 180 months at three and one quarter percent interest. Make that motion. Second. Commissioner Smee? Aye. Commissioner Rear? Aye. Commissioner Spiller? Aye. Motion stands approved. Thanks. Thanks for yeah. everything. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
tidings with financials. Mm -hmm. This financial today is the one that was pulled off financials. No. The the okay, I see you. This is a contract for CNC precision machine for a local development loan for the Office of Community Economic Development in the amount of $75,000. Okay, make that motion. Second. Second. Mr. Speedy? Aye. Mr. Rear? Aye. Mr. Spittler? Aye. Motion approved. And um, this is uh, JFS, and because that job uh, description for the executive director had not been changed since 1982, okay. they thought it was appropriate they just make some changes to have it in conformance with our other job descriptions. So, so what changed? Simply some you know, documentation on what the job is. I don't know if Christy has a copy of the copies down there with the You know what that's that's just the updated job description. So so basically the big changes Dave are gonna be what in there? It's simply re updating the uh, the types of duties and the points that are put on it, you know, as they document it's a it's a GFS form. Typically those would be approved by the executive director, but the one for the executive director has to be approved by you guys. So it's just reflecting what Tim's been, you know, doing in his position, bringing that up to date. From 1982 From to 19 now, there, I'm now. sure there were some changes right. or additional responsibilities right. yeah. if they weren't. Okay. I mean, I would, I would, th I would think that's only 82, was that's only 32 years ago. Yeah, maybe some might have been a change. Yeah. I think it was the welfare department back then, so. There was a change in me in 32 yeah. years. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, wow. And then we have it affected the date that, uh, you know, the, the interim acting director will take, take the position. Yeah, I'd like to read it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The other day, she was like, oh, we're in the process of revising it. She's like, it wasn't one of the things you need to. I'm like, yeah. What were you in 82? Second grade. Second grade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so two, he was a little farther ahead of me then, but yeah, not by much. <laughs> <laughs> He's still, still in elementary. Yeah. Okay, let it roll. Yeah. The Commissioner's Office is requesting the Board approve the revised job description for the position of Executive, executive Director of Department of Job and Family Services to be effective October 4, 2014. I'll make that motion. Second. Commissioner Sweeney? Aye. Commissioner Rear? Aye. Commissioner Spittler? Aye. Motion approved. And then you've got number 11, uh, Nick Wars, as the alternate for Blake Rear for the NOACA meeting on Friday. September 12, 2014. Make that motion. Second. Mr. Sweeney? Aye. Mr. Rear? Aye. Mr. Spillard? Aye. Motion approved. 12, and I'll do 13. 12 is completed, and 13 is. Uh, we have Kathy come up. Kathy. And, um, mm -hmm. Are you going to hang back there? Or are you gonna... Just supporting her. Just supporting her. Okay. Good morning. Hi, how are you? I'm well. Okay. Oh, good morning. Um, I'm here today to discuss the new SEPCO wellness initiatives required for all 32 counties in the consortium for 2015. But before I do that, I would like to briefly talk about where the county currently is in our wellness area and how we got where we are. I won't take too long. In the last 10 years, wellness has come a long way here. We went from offering a program <clears throat> and some lunch and learns with very, very low participation to offering a health and wellness expo this year with 458 employees in attendance. You were there, weren't you? It yes, it was, was a good one this year. Over the last 10 years, the county faced some major issues with rising health care costs and shopping for new health care providers every year. Remember those years well. 
The provider would bid low to get our business and then jack up the cost the following year. So we were continually shopping. We started getting a bad reputation about that as well. The year that we faced a 35 to 40 percent increase in premium rates was the year the county really got serious about wellness. <clears throat> it was the only recourse to combat rising costs and to be a good steward of taxpayer dollars. The Wellness Committee was formed at the directive of the commissioners, where 10 to 13 hardworking public servants of various positions in various departments serve on the committee, taking on the task of trying to incentivize employees to take better care of themselves. We offered walking, nutrition, stress relief, weight loss, and the fitness benefit program. Unfortunately, participation levels were really, really low, and we had no dollars to work with at all. In 2008, the county joined the SEPCO Consortium for a three-year agreement. We were the 15th county to join, and to date, there's 32 counties. The wellness efforts continued and were encouraged by SEPCO. In 2009, the county contracted with the Cleveland Clinic um, for our excellent wellness employee assistance program, which offers free counseling to employees and anyone living in their household. That helped reduce substantially um, the cost of mental health issues that were on our health care plan was an excellent, excellent decision. The county took a major stand on wellness in 2011. The decision was made to tie employee health care contribution rates to wellness activities. The first year was very simple. Employees had to just know their numbers, cholesterol, blood pressure, BMI, and glucose, and, and go to one class for health care consumer training so they'd be better shoppers for health care. It was a tough change, too. It was tough for the employees to, to make that change. Um, you know, we had a, a differential. So if they did those two things, they got a better rate than the employees who did not. So the following year and thereafter, employees provided proof that they visited their doctor for their annual physical and participated in three activities as outlined by the Commissioner's Wellness Committee. And that's where we are now, and that's what we've been doing since 2012. So this will be 2012, 13, and 14 is what we've been doing. And the employees have, we've had a 90% participation rate um, for our employees. Um, it really did make a major impact on all of our participation rates. Um, as I said, we had a health and wellness expo with 458 people. We had people um, doing our, our campaigns. And, you know, again, the hope is that people join in Obviously, they want the better health care rate, but once they get involved, they really do start getting on the wellness train and taking better care of themselves. To encourage wellness efforts even further, and because SEPCO believes that prevention is the key to preventing catastrophic claims, SEPCO began offering wellness grant dollars in 2011 to every county in the consortium. Geauga receives approximately $12,800, and we were then able to offer more substantial programs and provide equipment and tools to aid in our wellness efforts. I mean, this was a dream come true for our wellness committee and for the employees of Geauga County. The wellness committee was ecstatic to finally be able to take wellness to another level and very seriously took the responsibility of using these dollars wisely, knowing full well that about public perception, even when you're not using taxpayer dollars, we were very aware of our expenditures and how they might be perceived in the public eye. Since 2011, we have held an annual Health and Wellness Expo offering blood pressure, cholesterol, glucose, and skin cancer screenings, exercise demonstrations, information boosts regarding nutrition, holistic medicine. We even had an acupuncturist here and made some believers out of a lot of employees and much more. Um, every year, the attendance grew and grew, and it has become kind of a, a really neat event for employees to connect with one another and be exposed to other things that might enhance their wellness journey. Um, we have purchased physician um, the grade scales for our departments, blood pressure cuff, Vitamix machines to encourage healthy eating, and AEDs. We purchase wellness informational guides and books to aid our employees in their quest for healthier lifestyles, and we have conducted many more substantial wellness programs with respect to nutrition and exercise, and the wellness has left. And we feel that we have made an impact on employees. I would also like to mention that through these wellness efforts, we ask for a department wellness person in each, each of our agencies, and these aren't all under the authority of the commissioners and that we have had nothing but cooperation. These people have had to track wellness, all the wellness forms that came in from the employees. Um, they submitted a worksheet to me in November. This is above and beyond their call of duty and, and was time consuming. 
So, um, we have really appreciated all their efforts. And that brings me to the new wellness, um, Subco Wellness Initiative for 2015. As I said up front, um, they are requiring the counties to participate. They are not, we are not, we cannot and won't require the employee to participate. So we are required to be a part of this program, but the employee still has the choice of whether or not they want to participate for the incentive. And that's how our programs have been all along. They've all been voluntary. So SEPCO has contracted with a third party wellness firm called Stay Well. They are spending a large amount of money for this third party because as stated before, they believe that wellness and prevention is key to healthcare cost containment. And they are requiring all counties in the consortium to follow the new program. Basically, this is an online self-reporting program whereby the employee must, com must complete a health risk assessment and have a blood screening. Staywell will come out and conduct these screenings on site or the employee will have the option of downloading a form, take it to their doctor or to their lab. And LabQuest and Lab or Quest and LabCorp are 100% covered, so this would be no cost to the employees any way you do it. Employees can then participate in other activities as outlined, and I think you have that hand out in front of you, right? No, yeah, no, we don't. You gave me. They right. were, they, it was emailed to them. But oh, they okay. All right. Right. But, um, oh, but you're familiar with that. So um, employees then can participate in other activities as outlined to reach their incentive number of points. Stay well, be, stay well we'll be keeping track of the points. And next October, we'll let the county know who has achieved their incentive points. So the county is not seeing numbers. They're not seeing health care information. They're not seeing what the employee is participating in. Staywell is, is keeping track of all that for us. Again, good news for all those hardworking departmental people out there who've been keeping track and by hand and, and taking care of all of that for us. Um, so our, our task here is to choose the tier level for our employees. Um, being that this is a brand new wellness incentive um, and it's an online and that's, that's pretty bad because I know some of our employees do not have access to computers or aren't computer savvy. Um, and it is self-reporting, meaning no one's going to be keeping track of them or saying, hey, did you get this in or did you do that like everyone's doing? This is all going to be on them. The recommendation for this first year is to go with Tier 1. And, um, you know, as we transition into the change from what we've been doing to what we're going to be doing for um, next year. The employees would have to accumulate 125 points by attending lunch and learns, doctor's visits, and even other things will count now, like 5K races, um, and things that employees have done on their own for their health. I have gotten many calls over the years of people saying, but I ran a marathon, it doesn't count. Um, but because of our tracking system and because of our limited manpower, we really had to kind of keep it simpler and we couldn't just go willy-nilly, and, and especially when it comes to an employee paying more than somebody else. We wanted to keep it as fair as possible. So what will happen here is if the employee meets their incentive of 125 points, they will still they will receive the county wellness rate, which we are hoping that you will approve as well, that we want to still keep that differential, and in addition get a $100 cash incentive from SEPCO at the end of the year. Um, we'll have the ability to choose a different tier next year. I, I really kept, Dave and I had many discussions about this, you know. I mean, I might have gone for tier two, but um, I think maybe for this first year with the change in the communication process and getting everybody on board with the new program, probably starting at tier one is the best choice. Um, that's about it. That's what we're, you know, here today. Um, the program will run from January 1st through September 30th. And the other thing is that SEPCO still intends to award grant dollars to all the counties in the consortium on top of this. So, I mean, their, their um, stand on wellness is pre pretty, pretty huge, in my opinion, as far as um, what they're doing for the counties. Um, one other thing I, I would like to add, too, is in 2009, um, our premium renewal rate was 8.8%. In 2010, mm -hmm. it was 14.5 percent, and that's when the commissioner said, "Okay, what are we going to do about this?" And that's when we really started looking at it. So for 2011, we instituted the differential. We had a 9.8 percent increase um, in 2011. In 2012, we had a negative one percent increase, 
and in 2013, a 5.6% increase, and am I allowed to say what 2014 mm -hmm. is a 6.9% increase? Now, I would love to say that was all about wellness, but it obviously wasn't. Um, we did get rebates back from our prescription, and um, with any health care plan, if you have a major, if you have several large um, claims that whether or not they, they could have been prevented or not, there's yeah. a hurt your experience. However, at, in every claims meeting, it is always brought up about wellness in Java County and that they feel that it has impacted our renewal rates. And indirectly, it's good for the taxpayers as well. It's a win-win for everybody. Well, one of the things that I think is really quite outstanding is anyone who is 50 years old or older should go and get a shingle shot. If you've ever seen anyone with shingles later in their life, usually around 80, they'll have that. It can happen when they're younger, too. But a shingle shot normally runs around $240. But you can go to uh, Giant Eagle, CVS, the Minute Clinic. It doesn't even hurt. I mean, you don't even feel it. And it's completely paid for by our insurance. Mm -hmm. And the same goes for the flu shot. I've done that every year, and I'm telling you that the amount of, you know, minimal uh, yeah. colds. And I think, you know, all that is paid for by the insurance, which yeah. I think that really helps you because you don't know what's going to happen to you later down the road. And I know a friend of ours who had several, uh, two heart replacements. He died. He died from shingles. Mm -hmm. I mean, although, I mean, his immune system was low, but... One of his wife kept saying, I remember her saying to me, she says, get that jingle shot. Make sure you get it. And if you're 50 or older, mm -hmm. and it's not just people who are up and eight, but you know, 50 is not that old. Well, now employees can go get, get that for free and, and, it's get all 20, free. and get 25 points, too. So. And 25 <laughs> points? Yeah, that's, that's not on the Ooh. list. So, again, more incentives. And I mean, there's, there's sometimes skepticism. Oftentimes, there's skepticism. Oh, everyone, yeah, they'll say. You know, I use an example of the health fairs. Usually, every year, mm -hmm. we hear stories of one or two employees that went over there, you know, like, why am I here? What am I doing? They get a diagnostic, and they get sent to their doctor. Right, yeah. And we head off something that could have been a very expensive claim. Exactly. And, I, and this year, um, we had skin cancer screening, and we had 67 people wow. screened. 29 were referred. Now, that doesn't mean 29 hopefully did not, you know, have cancer, but 29 were referred. And I did hear from one person who called to thank us, and I think I, I forwarded that email because she actually did, that person did have cancer. Yeah. A lot of people say, oh, if you get the flu shot, I always get sick. Well, you know, mm -hmm. the flu shot is a dead virus. My daughter's a doctor of pharmacist, told me she said, the flu virus is a dead virus. The shingles virus, the shingles shot is a live is live. You can get them both at the same time as long as one is one's live and one's dead. But if you separate them, you have to have a month in between. But uh, mm -hmm. the, the flu virus is a dead virus. It's not a live virus. So that's something to, mm -hmm. you know. And I think if you haven't had it, you might get sick because simply because your, your immune system is down. But if you, if you do it all the time, you'll find that that immunity builds up over the years. And then it's really great not to get a cold. All right. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Is there an action now? I do. Um, I just, we, so we. Tier are, one. Tier one? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to add that into the motion here. And so the Commissioner's Office is requesting the board approve the Subco Stay Well Tier One Level Wellness Program for County Employees for the year 2015. I'll make that motion. Second. Commissioner okay. Speaker. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Good job. Thank you. Okay, the acknowledgments this week, we're going to have uh, the dog warden. Uh, all dog seized or impounded. Redeemed or destroyed for the week ending September 3rd, uh, 2014, as required by our code, 955.12. The 2013 14 criminal report filed by County Prosecutor. James R. Flays is required by ORC 30916. The annual report filed by the Jug County Sheriff's Office regarding all fines and costs in criminal prosecutions collected and paid is required by Harvard's Code 311.16. Our meetings are um, this afternoon. We have budget hearings starting at 1 o'clock. 
or public meetings for anybody that wants to attend. The um, NOAC on Friday, finance and audit at 8, governance at 9, executive at 10, and then the meeting is 11.30. Is that, the, uh, is that right, Cleveland Convention Center? Yes, sir. Okay. So then uh, the, the 16th, we have the uh, commissioners will hold regular sessions that will include a public hearing at 10.30 a.m. for the Ohio Department of Transportation, Rural Transportation, CY2015 operating and capital grant programs for the transit department. On the 16th, they will hold the uh, budget hearings uh, beginning at uh, 1 o'clock. On the 17th, we have uh, Department on Aging Annual Meeting Luncheon. 11.30 at the Notre Dame Education Center Auditorium. The 18th and the 23rd uh, session is canceled. The 23rd is the Perry Nuclear Power Plant Drill. The 25th and 30th is canceled. And then we have the 7th and the 9th regular session. With that, motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs>